autofocus versus manual focus with a wide angle lens inside your water housing. Now this is a question that has come up a lot over the last few weeks so I'm making this short tutorial today to show you the way I have decided between the two modes and how to get the best results with both options. Today's tutorial refers to manual versus autofocus when inside a water housing. When I land, I personally use autofocus for my stills photography every time. However, inside my housing, it's a different story. When I refer to wide angle, I'm talking about lenses that are 20 mil and under. So your eight to 15 mils, your 17 to 40, your 15 to 35, uh, and your straight prime lenses like your 20s and 15 mils. For water photography, these are why it's any longer than this, this focal length, and I would strongly suggest you use automatic focus inside of your water housing. Okay, so to start with, it's not an either or type thing. You are going to have to ask yourself what you are trying to achieve with your set of photos. If I'm shooting surface work like surf action or empty barrel shots, then nearly every time I will set to manual focus. Okay, so the main reason for this is because the nature of these wide angle lenses. These type of lenses have a huge, almost unlimited depth of focus that is inherently built into them, meaning that you can focus on something one meter away and the image will still be in fairly sharp focus way further back and also a little bit closer. So the point of focus is far less critical than when you are using say a 50 mil lens. As the focal length gets longer, the depth of focus reduces. So this means that wide angle lenses, um, your focusing distance is gonna be more forgiving. So you can use this to your advantage by setting your focus to manual and knowing that everything from less than a meter to at least 30 meters away will be in good focus. And by doing this, you take the challenge of focusing out of the equation for the entire session. And having that off your mind, can you can focus on other things like positioning and using the light and trying not to get hit while you're taking your images. Now, there are a few extra things to consider before you just go and rely on this working out. One is the way you set your focus before you put your camera into the housing. The way I do it is to have my camera set in autofocus and focus on something around say about a meter away and use center point focus to make sure it is locked in on the exact target that you think you are aiming at. And then I take a look at the focusing window. It should be pointing at around about the one meter mark which is just a smidge back from the infinity line on the distance gauge. I know not all lenses have this window but if it does, it's good to just reference it for a peace of mind, but it's not totally necessary. I then switch the lever on the lens from autofocus to manual focus and gently slide into the housing, making sure not to bump anything on the way in. Some crews swear by taping the focus ring in place so it doesn't move, but all the Canon wides I've ever used always stay in the same spot. So maybe the focusing rings are stiffer on some models than others, but I've never had a problem with it moving while in the housing, so if yours, yours does, then maybe you wanna consider uh, taping it into place. Just be sure not to knock it out of place while doing this. Once it's in the housing, look through the viewfinder and see if everything looks focused, and it should unless you've have somehow bumped the focusing ring. If it does look blurry, then take it out and check it again, and, um, but this shouldn't really be a problem. The other thing to consider here is your aperture. Um, a wide open aperture like 2.8, which is a large opening in the lens, will give you less depth of focus than an aperture of 5.6, which is a smaller opening in the lens. If you choose a large aperture like 2.8, the likelihood of getting everything in focus reduces. This is why I generally select an aperture between 5.6 and f9 when shooting wide angle action. This mid, these mid-range apertures give more than enough depth of focus to get super close action in focus right through to far away headlands. So even your shots where the surfer is far away, they will still be in good focus. With the aperture of 2.8, this is less likely. So my tip when shooting manual focus with wide angle lens is to use mid-range apertures if possible. These mid-range apertures should be open enough to let in enough light to give you a high enough shutter speed to freeze the action, you know, as well. So, but I get into balancing exposures in other videos, so we'll leave that for now. 
Another big reason why I opt for manual focus over autofocus when shooting surf action inside a housing is because of the way I shoot. When using wide angle lenses, I often use the pistol grip technique, which has me shooting with the camera well away from my eye. So I'm not using the viewfinder. So this means that I have no way of telling if the focusing points are directly over my subject. If I'm shooting autofocus with this method, the focusing points might be grabbing onto the foreground water that is only say 30 centimeters away or an island that is two kilometers out to sea. And I can't be sure if it selected the right zone for focus. Now, because wide angles are so forgiving, you'll actually get away with autofocus method and uh, not looking through your lens, but it does come down to luck a little bit. And by taking luck out of the equation, you can preset manual focus and get every single shot in good focus, not just nearly every shot. When shooting action, you have so little time to get everything working perfectly. So if you can take focus, the focusing part uh, of the work out of the equation, then that's one less factor that can ruin your shots. Okay, so I think this sums up why I often opt for preset manual focus when shooting surf action or empty waves above the surface. Okay, that wraps up part one of my manual focus versus autofocus with a wide angle lens inside a water housing. I figure I've thrown enough information at you for one tutorial, so in part two next Sunday, it'll go into the times when I opt for autofocus with a wide angle lens. There are definitely situations for both and times when manual focus will definitely not be your best option. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, give the manual focus technique a go if you have a lens that's 20 mil or wider. Cheers, legends.